Hi! In this video, I will show how the built-in booking calendar works. So every coach has their own booking calendar available if they want to use it. And in this, in this video, I will show all the features and functionalities that, is all, that it offers. So you can access the booking calendar either here from the dashboard. So you have this link to the booking calendar and also from here. So let's click open the booking calendar. So by default, I'm going to disable the calendar so you can see the starting view. So when you come to the booking calendar for the first time, you can see this. So you can read what it's about and then you can enable it. And after you have enabled it, you can start using it and your clients will see the booking feature in their app. So everything you create here is visible for the clients in the app if you want them to see it. So you can of course limit some customers or group members uh, visibility to the events. So you can uh, choose who can book appointments and who can see them. Or you can just show them to all of your clients. So here's the basic view of the booking calendar for the coach. So my calendar is this page. Uh, here's different views of the booking calendar that you can choose which one you like the best. So I, I added a couple of events to the calendar so you can see how it looks. So you can add these individual events like these to the calendar and also working hours like these green sections. So by adding one of these single events, you the coach can decide who joins the meeting so you can assign a certain client or multiple clients to, the, to that meeting or you can leave it empty so any one of your clients can book the appointment. And then here you can add like a working hour where you inform your clients that you're available, for example, from uh, 10 to 2 at a certain location. And then your clients can book an appointment for that period. So let's create an event. So this is like the single event creation page. Uh, when you create an event, you can save it as a template and then you can use it later on. So you don't have to build this from scratch every time you use the booking calendar. So let's create a new event. So first you give the event a name. Let's add example. Here you can choose the color of the event that's visible in the calendar and it's the same color from the client's point of view. This means that do you want to receive notifications about this event's status. So for example, someone cancels the appointment. If this is turned on, you will get a notification about it, an email also. So you don't miss anything that's happening in these events. So it's suggested that you keep this on, but you can turn it off if you don't want to get notifications. Then location, it's optional, but it's visible in the event itself. So if you add the location, your client will see it in the events description. Then you can choose the timing, the date, let's add 11th, then to, uh, the time. So for example, eight, duration, and then you can choose the time zone if it's necessary. You can also make it like a, every Monday. So for example, you can choose that it repeats daily, weekly, monthly. And then the next section here, uh, you, the coach, can assign clients to this meeting. So by clicking this, you can see the list of your clients and you can add, for example, Andy. Let's click add. So now Andy is added to this event and Andy can see this event in his own app, in the own, uh, in the uh, Andy's own account in the app. I can also add multiple trainers to this event if I want. And after adding them to this event, the coaches will see this event in their own booking calendars. So you can add trainers and clients manually. But then you also have the option of leaving this so-called empty. So you don't add clients to this. You just click this and now you allow your customers to book the appointments. So if I click this, now it's visible for the clients and now the client can book the appointment by themselves. Then you can also add maximum number of clients, for example, five. So it's like a small group workout. And then you can allow queuing if you want. So in this example, uh, the first five of your customers can book the appointment and then the uh, appointment is full. And when the sixth client tries to book the appointment, a pop-up window opens in the app that says that, hey, this is full, 
but you're in queue position number one. And then if someone from the original five cancels, this uh, person in the queue position number one gets a push notification and an email that, hey, good news, you have a spot in the event. And, they will, uh, they, and after that, they will see the event in the booking calendar in the client app. So you can add clients or you can leave it empty and allow your clients to book the appointment by themselves. Then you can write a description for that event. You can also add, for example, a Zoom link. If it's like a remote meeting with the client, you can add a Zoom link here so they can uh, enter, enter the meeting. And then you can save it as service. So after that, you have this as a template. So you don't have to specify all of this every time you create an event. So after saving, you can see the event and its details here. It's an example, this. So after you have created it, you can see if someone already booked the appointment, you can see who it is. You will, of course, get a notification that client A just booked the appointment. Then you can edit. Mark it as completed, show clients and edit the event after you have created it. Then the next section, you can create these working hours. So let's scroll down, add new. So you can choose when you're available, how long is the booking intervals. So for example, you, you want your clients to book one hour sessions with you. So then this would be 60 minutes. But if you uh, if you use like 30 minute sessions, then you can uh, describe this as 30 minutes. So every 30 minutes, a client can book an, a new appointment for, with you. Then the date when the working hours is valid, repeat if you want to repeat it, and then you can choose the service. So this means when the client books an appointment for this period, they will have to choose a service that they want to use. So you can choose which services are available for this working hour. So, for example, you're at the gym and on one day you just have these like introductional PT sessions, like 30 minute sessions with new clients where you're going to where you show how you work with clients. So then you would just add like a 30 minute, like a, like a demo session with the PT. But if you have like 60 minute meetings, then you choose that. So you choose the services you want to uh, clients to be able to book for that period. So let's choose in the, this example this. And you can add multiple if you want. So after saving, you can see it in the calendar and the client can start booking an appointment for that period. Then when you have created your own calendar, you can view it and edit all the events. You can cancel them, for example, and your clients will receive a notification that it's cancelled. So you don't have to send them a separate chat message or an email that, hey, sorry, I had to cancel. So you just you cannot you can just cancel it and your client will get informed. Then the second page here is other services. So this allows you to uh, create these uh, booking calendars for different events or venues. So in this example, there's a meeting room venue, which is visible for all the uh, like coaches in your company. So all of your colleagues will see this in their own booking calendar, other services page. So you could use this as a group, as a team, so you can see if the room is available or not. So I could, for example, book this meeting room for my clients today from like five to six in the evening. So other colleagues in the company see that, okay, there's already one trainer in the meeting room, so I cannot book it. So you can use this as a team and see uh, different venues and booking calendars avail availability so if it's already booked or not so you can click this so you can create a new calendar so let's add like spinning as an example so spinning booking calendar uh, status is it's a draft or published and then the calendars uh, duration so after you have created it you can click it and edit if needed and then you can see it here on the list and your colleagues can see the same calendar and you can start adding appointments to this section then you have statistics so this allows you to see how many appointments you have had so this is a, this is a list of all the appointments in the calendar for this month you can search them by name you can see a summary here how many appointments you have had how many have been have been cancelled 
and you can search by trainer, by year and by May, these reports. Then the last page you have settings. So here you have my services, meaning those templates you have created for the events. You can create new ones from here. Then calendar settings. So you can choose these as you want to use them. On calendar range. This means when we go back to the booking calendar. So uh, when it starts and when it's finished. So if I choose like a weekly view, I can see. So it starts from 7 a.m. and ends at 8, 8 p.m. So this duration is chosen from here. Then you can choose whether you want to receive a daily summary of the events via email. So you can see the same summary here by yourself, like manually. But if you choose, you can activate this and our system sends the report automatically to your email every day. Then you can choose this, who, which coaches are visible in the client app, like booking calendar. So you can choose just yourself, so only you are visible to your clients. Or if it's like a big gym and uh, you coach, uh, the coaches coach some of the same clients. So then you can enable your colleagues also, so they can see their appointment calendar, booking calendar also. Then you can choose who of your clients can see the calendar. So by default, it's visible to all of your clients. So all your clients will see the booking feature in the app. But if you want to limit, so it only, uh, it's only visible for those clients and group members you want, then click this. And after that, you go to the uh, clients and groups you want to, want to enable the feature. So visibility, only to select it. So now click open, for example, Amanda Hawking. Then click this, settings, and then show booking calendar. So now it's visible for Amanda Hawking and no one else. And the same logic goes with groups, so you can go to a group and then choose settings and show booking calendar. So now all, all group members, all of these will see the booking calendar. So that's a useful feature. So you can limit and choose who actually can see and use your booking calendar. So it's not visible to all of your, all, all of your clients and groups if you don't want. And here you can choose what uh, like uh, names, texts are used from the cl client's point of view in the client app. So there's two boxes in the client app when they're booking an appointment. So trainers is written on the other one and other services is written on the second one. So you can edit these freely and those uh, the edited text is visible in the client app. So you can rename, rename these pages as you want. So that's about it. So you have your own booking calendar that you can use and then you have other services that allows you to work as a team with your colleagues so you can see different venues, booking status. You can see statistics of your appointments and then you can also edit how the booking calendar works from your point of view. Great, that's it and thanks for watching. Bye.